Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've mastered the concept of arc length in the previous playlist, we're now ready to tackle what we call surface of revolution. So what is surface of revolution? Well, let's read the text that we have here. It says, if a shape is perfectly symmetrical about the x-axis, which means that for every point on the surface, for a particular value of x, it is the same distance from the x-axis. Then the surface area can be found by taking a section of arc length, which we call dl, and rotating it or revolving it around the x-axis and integrating that piece that we end up with, which is dA, a small area segment, over the entire arc length. So essentially what we do is we take a small little dl along the arc, along one of the sides of our volume here, we rotate it or revolve it around the x-axis, we end up with a small strip that is then over the surface of that object, and then we integrate it across the surface from x equals a to x equals b. And that will then give us the surface area of revolution, as they call it. So essentially, you first find the dA, a small little segment that wraps around the surface all the way around, where the x-axis is right in the middle of that little strip. That little strip has width dl and has a circumference 2 pi r because essentially it makes a little circle around that object. So then we multiply dl times 2 pi times the radius of that and that radius of course is going to change depending upon where we are on the x-axis and so the distance from the x-axis to the edge to the little dl segment well that's going to be y or a function of x so simply what we need to do then is we need to figure out what this function of x is on the surface of that revolution so what we then do is to get the total area we're going to integrate all those little segments so all the little da's from x equals a to x equals b so we have 2 pi times the radius now the radius is going to be a function of x it's going to be a value of y and that's going to change depending upon where we are times the arc length now if you remember from the previous videos the arc length can be found by integrating the square root of 1 plus the square of the, the derivative of the function times dx. So if you don't remember that, just go back to the previous set of videos, chapter 18, and we'll talk about the arc length and how to calculate that. So simply, we multiply the arc length, dl, times 2 pi r, that would be the circumference that we get when we circumvent or when we revolve around the x-axis. We get that little strip dA, we integrate across all the dAs, and we get the total surface area, or what we call the surface of revolution, of that object. Of course, the x-axis must be smack in the middle of that object, down, right down the middle. It's, it has to be the axes of that object. Now, of course, we can rotate it around the y-axis, around the z-axis. It will work for every axis, of course, but we have to have that symmetry for this to work. And of course, since you simply take a curve in space and then you're rotating it, revolving around the x-axis, it's going to be perfectly symmetric about that axis. And that is how we then find what we call the surface of revolution.